Okay, moving on, we're going to start talking about the protein synthesis inhibitors. And uh, these are focusing on the, uh, the ribosomes of the uh, ribosomes of the bacteria. And they are binding uh, to or interfering with the ribosomes and either uh, the 30S ribosome or the 50S uh, ribosome. So uh, examples of these are the tetracyclines and the macrolides and glindamycin. So let's talk a little bit about those. Okay, so now we'll have a little chat about tetracycline. So tetracycline is a broad-spectrum bacteriostatic drug uh, which inhibits the protein synthesis uh, of the bacteria. So this is working in gram-positive, gram-negative, and anaerobes. And you can have short-acting uh, tetracyclines, intermediate-acting, and long-acting, and long-acting ones, for example, doxycycline or minocycline. And examples of where this uh, where tetracycline can be used would be, for example, uh, mycoplasma pneumoniae, where it, it doesn't have a uh, cell wall, so you, um, you couldn't use uh, drugs that go after the cell wall, so tetracyclines would work here. Uh, chlamydia, uh, rickettsiae, and even Helobacteria pylori. So it really has a broad spectrum, and some of the adverse effects you should think about are superinfection, where you'd have a, an overgrowth of, <coughs> of bacteria, and uh, hepatotoxicity, uh, nephrotoxicity, venous thrombosis, photosensitivity, vestibular um, symptoms uh, like calcium chelation, and for doxo doxycycline, um, although there's no renal adjustment required, um, if you're taking anti-seizure meds, barbiturates, alcohol, it's going to decrease the half-life of doxycycline. And the reason for this is the cytochrome P450 in the liver is going to be um, increased. What's happening is going to, it's going to decrease the half-life of the drug because it's work the P450 is working over time. So it's uh, the drug is going to be cleared uh, faster uh, from the uh, from the liver, so the half life is going to be changed. So let's think about that. Okay, so on to the macrolides. So these may be used for strep or uh, staph infections in patients who are allergic to penicillin and uh, cephalosporins, and um, so. Uh, for erythromycin, uh, clarithromycin, azithromycin, these are uh, 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 macrolides, examples of uh, uh, macrolides. Um, and there are a few side effects, um, and the majority of these are with uh, erythromycin. Uh, so, uh, looking at the side effects, there's uh, problems with gut motility, hepatotoxicity, um, acute uh, cholestatic hepatitis, and one of the well, the main things here is that uh, it, it uh, inhibits uh, cytochrome P450 in the liver, um, so it's not going to be uh, metabolizing the uh, drugs so well. So it's going to be a problem if you are taking uh, theophylline um, <clears throat> for your lungs, warfarin, cyclosporine, uh, meth methylprednisone, or digoxin for your heart. Uh, it's going to uh, to slow down the metabolism of these uh, of these drugs. So, so those are the macrolides, and uh, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we're going to talk about clindamycin here. So, this is the last one of the series, uh, and clindamycin inhibits protein synthesis, and it works very well with anaerobes, uh, for example, from penetrating wounds of the abdomen also used for dental prophylaxis and in the female genital tract. Um, it's also used for, um, well, intravaginal uh, clindamycin is used to reduce preterm birth in women with abnormal genital tract flora. Uh, the abs, some of the adverse effects, GI upset, impaired uh, liver function, neutropenia, and one of the things you have to be careful about clindamycin is that it might cause an overgrowth of C. diff.